Today we're going to talk about one of the most important steps in LiPo care. That's discharging your battery down to 3.8 volts. The DJI batteries have a built-in discharger, but it takes days to discharge and still won't take it down to 3.8 volts. Your regular FPV battery, you can use your charger, but it still takes extra time. Well, I found a way that you can do all of these batteries, whether it's an Avada, an FPV drone, a regular Mavic battery, a 6S LiPo cell, and you can do it rapidly and safely. We're gonna go over several different batteries. I'm gonna put chapters down below so you can fast forward to the one that you use yourself the most, or if you wanna hang out and watch all of them, I'm more than happy for you to stay. The first battery that we're gonna to do today is this Mavic 2 battery. It's a Mavic 2 Pro. I also have a Mavic 2 Zoom. I got back from a photo shoot last evening and the battery still has almost a full charge. It was a very short flight, but I wanna discharge it down to 3.8 volts. The first thing that we need to do is we need to get ourselves a discharge unit. I've chose this one here by ISDT. It's a 200 model, which is capable of 25 amps uh, of discharge. Now, 25 amps of discharge is a lot of discharge and you don't necessarily want to discharge your battery at that high of a rate. It will cause degradation to the cells and especially the DJI batteries, you really don't want to discharge that rapidly because then the battery is intelligent and it'll think something's wrong. Now, I've also found that when you're discharging the new Avada batteries that you can't discharge them at a very high rate at all. In fact, two amps is the maximum discharge rate before the battery will actually say, no, I'm not gonna discharge and it turns off the protect itself. We're gonna go over all that here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to hook this battery here to our discharge unit. Now, I was able to uh, find some cables. This cable I actually found uh, is pre-made for the Mavic 2. Uh, Pro. They also have them for a Mavic. They have them for the Air 2 and Air 2S as well. I'll put links in the description below uh, so it's easy for you all to find those. All we need to do is we need to take this and put it onto the battery. It's important that you pay attention to the little detent on it so you put the battery connector on correctly. Then what we're going to do is it has an XT60 connector. We're going to plug it into our discharge unit. Now, the discharge unit, when it comes from the factory, is automatically going to discharge after, I believe, three seconds, it'll start discharging. You can set the number of cells by pressing the buttons on it, as well as the discharge rate from 5 to 25 amps per, per uh, cell, I believe it is. Um, but what I like to do is I like to use their app. Now, in the app itself, you can control absolutely everything here. So... Um, what you want to do is once you've purchased your ISD uh, T uh, discharge unit, uh, you need to download their Go app here, the ISD Go. Now, this will communicate via USB to, I'm using an iPad here, you can use your cell phone or multiple different devices. Uh, it will do Android as well as iOS system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my battery here. So now the battery itself is active. All I have to do is press any one of the buttons on the front of this unit. That it automatically starts up. I'll go ahead and I'll go into my um, app here. The screen is dulled out, so it's showing that the um, it's talking to the charger. And we can see that this battery here uh, has 16.6 .6 volts in it, and it's saying that the average cell voltage is uh, 4.15. Now, I'm saying average cell voltage because it's looking at the overall voltage for discharge. It doesn't have a balance lead on it. It won't balance discharge, but your aircraft doesn't balance discharge when it's, it's flying through the air. So what I've actually done is set up presets in the app here. And the way you do that, if you go in the settings here, and let me touch on this. When you first start this up, for the first time and you go into the app, it's gonna prompt you to update the software. When you go to update the software, it's gonna have several messages that are gonna say, hey, disconnect the battery. Well, that makes no sense because then the unit doesn't have any power to connect via Bluetooth for a software update. So I just disregarded those and went ahead and it updated just fine. There was absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. Now, on the automatic discharge here on the screen, I'll show you here, I'll put it up as well. 
um, I'm going to say I want it to um, automatically close. Now, and it's kind of weird verbiage here where automatic discharge is closed or automatic discharge is open. Automatic discharge means if you plug the battery in and turn it on, do you want it to automatically start discharging? I don't want to do that. I want to control the number of cells and the, the amperage and all that. So what I want to do is go back in here um, and do a preset task. So what I have is preset tasks here. And as you can see on my screen here, I have an Avada, a DJI FPV and a Mavic 2. So if I select the Mavic 2, it automatically starts discharging. And it'll take a minute, the fan will start the roar here, and then the LED lights on the front here actually show you the status of the battery, as well as it's shown on your, your digital device as well. Now, for sake of time, I'm not gonna let this go through all the way, but what I've set this battery up is five amps of discharge, um, as well as it's a four cell battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit stop on that. So the next battery that we're gonna go ahead and cover is the uh, DJI FPV battery. And these batteries I found um, don't discharge very rapidly. This one here, uh, it looks like it's almost still a full charge. So what we'll do is we'll grab our pigtail lead here that I was able to find. I found this on Alibaba. I'll put a link in the description. It does work really well. The wire looks like it's a little small, but it's never gotten hot on me at a five amp discharge. So we'll go ahead and we'll place this on our battery here, turn the battery on. Then we'll go ahead, plug it into our unit, touch any one of the front buttons. The unit automatically starts to uh, communicate via Bluetooth. Then all I'll have to do is I'll click on my preset tax, task, excuse me, and then I'll do my FPV drone or DJI FPV drone and it will start to discharge the battery. Now this will take it down to 3.8 volts per cell. So it's obviously discharging now. Uh, it'll run through the complete cycle. It'll beep multiple times when it stops and after a minute it'll shut off, which is nice so it doesn't drive you crazy with the, the beeping like your battery charger will. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop on this. So that's done. And we're gonna move on to our last battery here or second to last battery, the uh, DJI Avada. Now this one caused me a little bit of a problem because I couldn't find any pre-made connector for it. So what I actually did is uh, on Cloud City Drones, and I'll put a link in the description, they actually sell the battery connector that is on the Avada that's back in the back here that goes to the actual speed controller. So I purchased one of those and then just put a, a pigtail on here with a um, XT60 connector. So all you need to do is just put that into your discharge unit, then put your cable on. And, and I know you can probably use an XT30. I've seen people do that, but I like using the factory connector. That way there's no way there's any damage can be done to the battery and it shouldn't void the DJI warranty. We'll go ahead and we'll turn the battery on. We'll touch one of the buttons on the front of the discharge unit. Now this battery, like I said, I found through exper experimentation that the battery itself will only take a maximum of two amps of discharge because I set it for five amps like everything else with the 4S battery and it kept on turning off. And I'm like, okay, well, I just spent money on a connector and now it doesn't work. This is very disappointing. So I started decreasing the amperage of discharge. So I put it at a half amp and it worked just fine. And then I increased it up to two amps and then at like two and a half amps, it will automatically shut off. So two amps is the maximum discharge rate. So I'll go into my preset task and I'll do my DJI Avada. Now, the easiest way to set up a preset task in this app here, if we go to preset task, excuse me, if we go to settings here and then preset task down at the bottom here, and then in the upper right hand corner, we're gonna click plus here. Now, what we can do is we can name it here. In this case, we're gonna call this test and then discharge current. We're just gonna click on here and dial the current that we want. And in this case, to make this, I want two amps. The cutoff is gonna be 3.8 volts. Now, sometimes DJI, I actually haven't done this yet, but I was thinking it would be a good idea. For the battery calibration, they need you to drain it down to three volts per cell. And this might be a great way to do it instead of flying and hovering and trying to keep it off the ground until the battery falls below 10% of capacity. 
So I wanted it 3.8, and then in this case, this is a 4S battery. So I'll set it to 4S, and then I'll click the, the check mark here. And now we have it as a preset task in our tasks here. Um, but I already have one for the um, Avada, so I'll just touch that and go ahead. Well, I'll jump back out of here. That's in the task. I can actually edit the task itself. So I'll just click on my preset task, DJI Avada, and it'll go ahead and it'll start discharging. And hopefully that takes care of all the DJI needs that you have here. As you can see that the fan is, took a while to come on because it's only discharging at two amps instead of five amps. So we'll go ahead and we'll stop this. The last battery that we're actually going to do is a standard LiPo for a regular FPV drone. These are actually very easy. In fact, this is what this discharge unit is designed for. It's an XT60 connector. You literally just plug it into the front here, press any button to activate it. It will go ahead and, and put it into Bluetooth pairing mode, connect it to our app here. It's already reading it. This one actually is almost fully charged. Now it's also saying that it's a 4S and I know this is a 6S battery. So I'm gonna to go to my preset tasks and I'm gonna go ahead and select my 6S LiPo. And now we can see on the screen here that it's actually jumped to 4.05 volts per cell. So it's gonna go ahead and automatically discharge. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here so we don't have to listen to the fan. What I'll do is I'll put some time-lapse video showing actually how this works. Hopefully this helps you. I found it to be really good as far as I feel safe about my batteries, discharging them down to 3.8 volts per cell. It does seem to help the flight time on the batteries over time. My batteries were usually stored fairly much charged. I would only put a little bit of charge in it. And I found that since I've been discharging, especially this Mavic 2 that I use on a daily basis, the flight time actually has increased about four or five minutes per pack, uh, which means that the battery is doing better overall and has less degradation. Hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the, in the uh, comment section below. I'll definitely answer your questions. Uh, hopefully uh, you can check out the links as well. Uh, I've really found this unit to be good. If you have any other suggestions, let me know. And I will try to do my best to put all these cables in the description below. Uh, hopefully they'll be making one for the Avada so you don't have to make it yourself. But I really do like the fact that I have control over my batteries and how uh, to take care of them properly. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one.